So, um, Alan, are you up to taking minutes? Yeah, I think I can manage that. Okay. Which Thanks. arm? Oh, it was last week. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Uh, <clears throat> so, Judy sent around the minutes of our meeting of July. Um, I guess, do I have a motion to approve them? I'll move it. Okay. Move it, except. Okay, Allison seconding, all in favor, uh, any discussion, any, okay, all in favor, <laughs> approved. Okay. <laughs> um, the center school, um, so I forwarded a lot of material to uh, out that Brian had sent around last week. Um, I, I think the good news is that Brian at least is very eager to get this house on the market you know, before the snow falls, when, um, which is great. I uh, town council took a couple weeks longer than usual, but or, the, or than than predicted, but not months, which is good. Um, she she is the real estate attorney in the town council's office. Had not a single word of comment on the draft preservation restriction document. No gold star for you. I don't even, I don't like gold star. I'm just glad. <laughs> That's a gold star. For all of us, for all of us. Um, but I think uh, the select board's meeting tomorrow night, and I had said to Brian that we should, we would talk about it. Um, uh, I think the two questions on the table, um, and correct me if I've gotten them wrong, are this notion of something called a land development agreement and whether we have an opinion about the use of it, um, and then the draft purchase and sale agreement, which we had not seen until last week. Um, so should we start with a, so um, just, uh, I, in case not everyone has read everything, when Brian forwarded the documents, which he did just to Judy and me, I think not so much as the historical commission, but as his very reliable proofreaders <laughs> out, you know, in the, um, he said, I don't know why we need this land development agreement. It seems redundant. And well, I he said he thinks it's too onerous. Uh, onerous, onerous, exactly. Oh, yeah. He thinks um, he thinks developers will balk at it. Um, well, Judy and Judy or came he back. Fears. He fears. He that. fears. Right. And the last thing we wanted is is to deter, you know, any of these hordes of potential buyers who will show up. Further, um, there are three. There are three who are actively. I, I know. I know. Evidently, yeah. all for residential use. Hmm. Um. And Judy came back and said a couple of things, and I'll I will let you speak. Judy in a minute, I promise, but the one that made me laugh is that it's also just plain contradictory to the preservation agreement in a couple of places. Um, for example, it says that the select board would be overseeing the historic preservation aspects um, of the ongoing use of the building Change, changes, as opposed to the historical commission. So um, Judy, what else should we say about that? It's well, I really did think it was. I well, let's step back. I think I don't remember the extent to which this group discussed it. I know Brian and I did. Um, the preservation restriction agreement gives huge amount of protection to the town in terms of um, ability to oversee ch changes. Um, ability to inspect, ability to require that the property be maintained and not fall down. Um, Brian did point out that that probably the latter, you know, if, if it just got neglected, you have to take the guy to where it is to court, but that would be true with the land development agreement as well. I think a lot of those protections are the reason for the land development agreement. So to, I think it's not only, to me, extremely onerous, um, I don't think it's necessary. And, and in many ways it's duplicative. The preservation restriction is something that is gonna be required for three quarters of the 
preservation financing that might be sought is something these people are used to. Um, and as Donna said, I think in a couple of places it conflicts. Um, it establishes slightly different timelines. It's got different overseers responsibility. And so, so I what concluded lawyer, it was not only unnecessary, but potentially harmful. So why do the lawyers want this on the town council side? I th Go ahead. I think this is a belt and buckle. I mean, a uh, um, suspenders and belt kind of thing. Uh -huh. um, I'm not convinced that, by the way, I, I really like your overalls, Allison. I, I'm jealous <laughs> looking at your suspenders oh, there. Thank you. They look um, like cl classic Carhartt to me. <laughs> yes? But I'm not convinced that she had uh, the president. Uh, cool, weather, cool weather fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's very interesting. That's an interesting because what attorney do we know who ever reads any document, let alone one that's forty pages long and makes not a single red line? You know, red line. I think it's one of those things that I was. There was one place where that they had left the word Weston instead of substituting Waitley. It's a cut and paste, yeah, yeah, or, or, or I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a, a previous, obviously something that is used, and and I know Weston also uses Koppelman and Pages to like ninety percent of the other municipalities. That's what I have think. their own town council. Um, yeah, I've I, been trying to think of a building in Weston that it could be, and I can't think of one that would have had a preservation restriction. So I, which doesn't. So I I would guess that it's not typically used when there is a preservation restriction, I don't know. I think the other the other thing that, that we can say, because I think Brian is in a certain sense um, asking our support and the discussion with the select board is that we consulted <laughs> at great length and in great detail with the Massachusetts Historical Commission, which is part of the state government, which has advised many, many towns that have sold municipal properties to private entities. And um, we looked at a lot of, you know, what we've proposed is what they have seen work in other um, settings. And we saw, this has now been going on long enough that I can't remember the towns, but we saw examples of the full RFPs with all the attachments from a couple of towns, which didn't include anything called a land development agreement. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not, this is in some ways a little bit out of our scope, except that if anyone insists that we have a land development well, agreement, it ought at least not to be contradictory. <laughs> To the preservation I would, say, I would say other than the the collective taxpayer, there's no group in West in Waitley that's more interested in seeing this building survive and survive in good shape than, than the historical commission. We do have a vested right. interest. We would love to be supplanted you know, by others with more interest. But, <laughs> or at, um, least, at least supported. <laughs> you know, it's not like we don't care, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I don't think we're at least, I don't, I mean, I really feel like the protections in that preservation agreement are are good and solid. So I think the question um, is whether we're all, uh, I mean, I will go to the select board meeting tomorrow night. Julie, are, Ju Judy, are you planning to go? You, you don't have I, to. <laughs> I did the last two um, exactly <laughs> tomorrow and back if I'm still alive and kicking I can, can hold my head up I'll sit in okay okay does that make sense to Alan Allison yeah. sure Allison I can't tell if you're thinking or your screen has frozen yes I'm nodding sorry nodding yes oh okay there now you are now you are moving <laughs> Okay, so I think the they're other... freezing up my end a little bit. So yeah, yeah. 
um, but we're getting a different view of your really beautiful paint color than we've had before. Yes, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. Right yeah, off the long. right off the historic New England paint. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a pharaoh in ball. Oh, 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 oh well, ball. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Um, so the purchase and sale agreement, I had a couple of questions about it that, that might be helpful, but others, please go first. Well, I had a whole list and Brian uh, dealt with them well, so I don't think I Okay, so to... you're, you're, you're okay, okay with you Brian's. Know. Okay. Um, Alan, Allison, anything mm -hmm. that you want to bring up? I have nothing to add. I don't think I've. Tried to read it, but it's hard. To, there's a lot of it. Yeah. But I have looked at it at least and don't see a problem. Um, so and you sent some comments, didn't you, Donna? No, no. I forwarded Judy and Brian. Oh, I thought you had. Yeah, I have not commented. Oh. Um, the, the only two things that I just wanted to ask you all about, um, I don't think you have to look at this. It's under point 24, which is called title or practice standards. And the first clause is no building structure or improvement of any kind belonging to any person or entity encroaches upon or under the premises from other premises. I don't actually know what that means, <laughs> but I wondered if it has any implications for the uh, proposed easement for the milk bottle. And if no one else read it this way, I will send a note to Brian myself to ask, or if no one can. Well, I would this. assume that if if the easement is specifically identified, that it's not a problem. That 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 sort of precedes this clause. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I wondered about that. The other thing is real. It refers in a couple of places to something called the Declaration of Driveway Easements and Covenants, which I did not see in the document. I have. Okay, it seems like from Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, the Declaration of Driveway Easements. <laughs> You're right, exactly. I think the Proud Boys are all against that. <laughs> so, indeed. <laughs> okay, I will ask that question. Um, the other thing I should tell you is that Brian wrote um, to the Historical Society to Neil to say that the town council had recommended um, uh, that a draft easement for the milk bottle be included. And Brian nicely offered to have town council draft it. So Neil has written, well, he wrote to ask for the conditions that we had built into the preservation restriction. I mean, this is, talk about belt and suspenders. This is a lot of, and there was maybe, Oh, and he added that the whoever buys the building can't drape and hang, hang anything on the milk bottle, you know, like blinking lights <laughs> or, 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 a sign. or a banner. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or anything. Um, but that's um, a what? <laughs> yeah. I've I always wanted to sneak over there and put a striped straw out of the top. Yeah. Um, well, especially since the Historical Society just spent a couple thousand dollars getting the thing repaired. <laughs> no. I think we've lost Allison. We've lost Allison. Um, so the only other thing I've said to Brian is that we're previous to this exchange is that we're very... Um, much prepared to help with the RFP. I think he's already sent us the draft RFP though, because Alan, you found a funny typo. It was a typo, yeah. Which I corrected it. Yeah, yeah. No, these were the two things remaining after the RFP. Okay, okay. Here comes Allison. Um, Just so blacked out. <laughs> So anything else we should talk about, um, about the center school? 
So, I, I, Allison, can you hear us? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the only other thing I should say it was probably that I was nostalgic for that wonderful afternoon we spent in the ninety-eight degree weather scrubbing chairs next to the center school. <laughs> Look at Alan really? smiling. It was a great day. <laughs> Is that I said I said to Brian, you know, I'm probably being ridiculous, but would it help to have the building look better if we got a half a dozen people together and we cut out all the invasives that are climbing up over the front of the building. I mean, it's just, yeah. and he was in his Brian perfectly sensible, I don't know. <laughs> this, I have no idea. I don't know what people who buy this kind of building, you know, how, you know, curb, maybe curb appeal is not an issue. Would we do have a fund who gets rid of that stuff professionally, so it's... they actually probably want it to look as bad as possible. But you mean the, the it's we kind the, of a reverse thing, you know. You mean we the seller or they the buyers? They the buyers. Oh, oh so they can offer as little money as possible. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I was amused. This is totally off subject that in the draft preservation restriction we had put a placeholder of a dollar and the town council and the land development agreement put a placeholder of a thousand dollars and yeah. that's western prices for you that's western prices there you yeah. go oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go <laughs> i think you're right okay so um so judy and i will show up for the select board discussion tomorrow night and i'm really hopeful that we get agreement to move forward you know, before the leaves have all fallen. Um, the North Street project. Judy, I think this is on you at this point. Well, um, I did a draft, what they call the data sheet for the area form. It's you, you can see it in the historic National Register districts or, or any of the individual area forms. It lists the buildings. Um, Lie down, come on. Come here. Lie and down. and um, the year they were built, the style and the parcel number. And it's set up so that when you when you number these then those are the keys for the area map so so if it's number one on this and number one on the map you can go back and forth and see what you're talking about um it was very frustrating because you work with the what they call the form and the styles architecture that architectural that mhc gives you and they don't have anything much for post-World War II architecture. Hmm. I mean, you can't say colonial or you can't say um, ranch. You can say ranch because that's a form, not a style. Um, but so it's very hard to distinguish those. Um, I was grateful that you pointed that out. And you, I think when you first sent it, you sent the lists of the the menu yeah. from which you could choose because I had started reading them without it and was fussing around. And then I realized that my suggested edits, none of them were possible. Yeah. Because I actually of the menu called they and provided. talked to Peter Stott and I said, look, I'm working with a, I think it's a 2014 or 2017 instruction manual. Have, have you fixed this? <laughs> Have you updated it? No. Um, he said he'd be happy to review anything we did and comment, but I actually don't think that matters too much. Um, I found it much harder than I expected to match the parcels to the addresses, um, partly because they jump all over the place. And I wouldn't guarantee that they're 100% right, but. Um, lay down, lay down, go on. Um, the other thing is, yeah. the instructions say that if 
they they really want you to list important buildings or or buildings anyway. So they say if if it's identified if it's worthy of a photograph, say in the form B, it should be independently listed on its own line and and given a key number in the which is good because there are a lot of barns and things here that aren't necessarily related to the to the lots. There are a lot of places where I don't have a clue what the date is. I've used either the date from the from the MHC inventory form where there is one or from the assessors where there isn't. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of places, like I know the house next to Lynn Sibley's was was originally a Quonset hut. That, that at the time in the 1970, they put a wood frame over it so it would look like all the other houses in town. So it would be appropriate for the bicentennial. Um, hmm. I don't know when the Quonset hut was built and that's probably the, the more significant date of the two. And, and these things can be researched. But anyway, it's a starting point. What is the difference between contemporary and post-war traditional? I would think contemporary would be well. Post-war traditional. I, 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 I should go and look at the houses that you, and that would probably answer my question. <laughs> I I interpreted that to be post-war traditional to be more like what you think of as a a quote colonial or, or a, a faux a faux colonial house. Yeah, yeah, um, I see. Whereas contemporary, as, as opposed to something that's purposefully built to look modern. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like like uh Ann Lomley's house. Yeah. Well Ann Lomley's house, the I, I know is is such at least the original house is so breathtakingly perfect as a mid-century modern house. Um in I've been right, but that would be a contemporary and but not, now it's not, contemporary, it's right? Right, right, yeah. right. Which isn't really contemporary. We're going to need a new phrase for something built this century, right? Well, you, you, you we're stuck with their phrases. It's not. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, and you're deciding to your your or at least your proposal is to identify the hillside dairy barn as destroyed rather than in the process of falling down. Well. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> I just put it. No, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I think that's perfectly reasonable, and I'm still incredibly happy that Allison, that you and I managed to get there and crawl all over it and take eighty photographs while while most of it was standing. <laughs> well, a lot of it was standing, but but it is, I think, destroyed in in terms of it is not a useful structure for anything. Fair enough. It was yeah. intended to be. It's, it's not really demolished. It's it just no, it's, it's collapsed. Not, I could say collapsed. I suppose collapsed. Yeah. Collapsed is probably the more, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, thank you. This is. I mean, I know this took really a long time, um, and probably a lot of walking up and down your street looking at houses. Um, what do we need to do next? I'm sorry, just as an aside, Judy, what do you call Bill and Sylvia Nice house? Oh. Is that post-war modern? I, I put ranch. I put ranch. Ranch. Oh, all right. Is that a category that's a possibility? Yes. Because. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just curious what that would be. Well. The, the two parts, the, the two narrative parts that need writing are the architectural history or the architectural summary and the history, economic or history, history. Um, I volunteered to do the architectural one some time ago, I think for the other, we could break it down into segments and 
if individuals could get get me, you know, a paragraph say on quant quant, I and it's it's an issue about how do you deal with something that goes over a couple centuries and evolves. But I think um say say with quant quant um in a paragraph for each iteration of its you know, as the dairy, as the, and then maybe as the orchard. This is the general a, overview, you mean? Yeah, like. Yeah, it would be yeah. like generations of ownership, you know, so that we can divide that into handy chunks, I think. Yeah, and then, then we can mix and match if, if we want to talk about, you know, the dairy history. We can take the dairy parts of of the various well, dairies. you know, it has, a, uh, you know, there's hundreds of years of history that they really was only 22 years worth of its history. Yeah. Um, 23, four. But if, you know, I think we could talk, of, have a section in the history about industry and, or which would be the, the tannery and the um, wallet making and the, cider in the mill um another one about you know 19th century farming or i don't know but but if we had you know if we had the history of the scott farm when the when the cow barn was built when when it became a dairy as opposed to whatever a commercial dairy as opposed to just a a farm with some cows um same with the Belder Farm. We have history on Hillside. Um, you have Quan Quan. I can do a little bit on the Wallet Factory from the research I did before. Um, if we started to assemble those pieces, I think we could compile eventually compile them into a narrative. Do you think that um, in the case of the Scott and Belder Farms, that it would be um, helpful and I guess also appropriate to ask them I, I mean with is it Cynthia Scott the is her first name Cynthia uh, Liz Scott Liz Liz I'm sorry <laughs> Liz Scott sorry I don't know where I, I knew I was wrong I, I mean my impression with her is that you could almost give her an example from someplace else and tell her how many words you need. You know, yeah. well, you, know you don't just, want to have people just, doing just more work. Than just they. sit down with her. Yeah. Or, you know, and what can you tell me? And if you're missing a date, you know, send it to me later kind of thing. You could do it just chatting. Mm -hmm. um, sit down with Ronnie Belder. Mm. Um, Um, if, well, if I think Alice, Allison knows about, about the cider mill, right? Uh, the craft cider mill. Yeah, you could write about three lines on that. I only know what I have kind of glimpsed from the diaries that Derricka has. We're talking like three lines, you know. This oh, is good. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess we could. Um, I mean, it's going to be a reference in a, a longer piece. You, it's not. It's it's. Yeah, not. yeah. Well, I mean, we can from between crafts and what Derricka has, we could write a couple of lines, right? Um, I would be um willing to sort of take assignments, <laughs> you know, to go find out information. But Judy, I at least, since you, you I think are much farther along in thinking about this, would you be um, willing to do an outline? I thought that was coming. <laughs> and that, and then we could, you know, yeah, parse it out. We could yeah. parse it out and make yeah. sure, you know, and and we should probably um, all of us look at our own, uh, look at maybe the is I think maybe the West Waitley. Um, area is a good example for us to look at because it's complicated 
You mean the map yeah. entry for it? The right, right, because that's yeah. what we're talking about an area entry. And of course, he now I I I communicated with Peter Stott, and I know he sent us the maps of a couple of farm farming areas that he liked. Did and I'm I'm embarrassed. I don't remember. Did he also send us the texts? Well, we can look them up, presumably. Farming exactly. area he liked, like random ones around Massachusetts, you mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. At one point earlier in the summer, we had agreed that it might be useful to see. And, and, and I remember, the only thing that I remember from that, and I did not look at it again before this meeting, is that he pointed out about, um, about <laughs> one. It's nice that my clothing is falling apart. <laughs> Maybe time to invest in a new fleece or a new zipper, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he pointed he pointed out in one case that they that they'd actually the Mass Historical Commission had rejected the proposed area because it wasn't contiguous. It it was sort of um, a series of blobs, <laughs> you know, circular and oblong shapes around an area, which we were not proposing doing. But I thought that was interesting. Did he? I don't think he sent us the texts actually. Um, well, so he has, like he has the name. You can find it. I yeah i think the the information pieces are not going to be hard and i'm happy to give a an outline and i suspect people ought to add more um but organizing it i think is going to be tough um i you can do it by time period you can do it by type of economic activity um a little bit of both and and I'm not sure how to think about it till we see the pieces actually, and I don't. I suspect that's late. It's not not only lazy thinking, but might be counterproductive. But um, anyway, well, I, the the way they at least for the National Register listings, the, the protocol seems to be that you identify all your structures and you do some general talking description and then the more detailed descriptions of the structures are organized by period um which which you know any of you who've looked at any of those and i think alan helped to write the one <laughs> that we have for this town center i actually find kind of confusing because you're you know you're bouncing up and down the street as yeah, you know, yeah i find it very confusing yeah yeah but, and i'm not sure that and it's it's very architecture centric Right. right. Yeah. Well, there is. I think it's you have to be careful here because there is an architecture sec section and there's also a history section. And now we we are now talking about the history section. We're talking about yeah. the history section. Yeah. It's not that they're independent, obviously, but um, and um, Allison, but the focus you, is different. You sent some aerial views. Uh, um, again, some weeks ago, were, were they all um, contemporary or were some of them historic? Remind me which things you're talking about. You sent some views of the North of North Street. Um, I think I have to make a folder for this okay, project. Color? I, I, I don't know if you I mean there were some of each. satellite, you know, Google satellite views or drone like here we are, aerial images of North Street. You sent them, I can't tell when you sent them. Oh God, it's wanting me to sign into Dropbox. I'll never manage to do that oh, on my, my iPad. I'm able to find them here. Yeah, I can, well, I can tell you when you sent them. Um, you, no, sent them you, you sent them on July 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like from your note, they were- I think they're Google, I think they're Google. They're they're recent. They're screenshots, you know, from Google satellite images. I believe that's what you're talking about. You say you used one from 2021 and one from the 1990s. Yeah. So that, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're from mass maps. Right. And they have different, you know, generations of, yeah. They, I think one, and they are called aerial as opposed to satellite because they are taken from a plane. Right. Essentially not right. not satellite. So the 1990s is also a plane flying over. 
Right. Yeah. They're just interesting to compare. I think, yes. That, and that, I'm sorry, Donna, that seems like that was years ago to me. Oh, it does. Well, that's what Alan and I were talking about before yeah. you two signed I, I, on. Just this yeah. summer has been beyond belief. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Those are just, and we could re recreate them, but they, it was meant to show the changes and you can see, you know, where a whole bunch of houses have come in and vegetative changes and it's interesting um, to have. And should we include any like the relevant sections from the the two atlases, the Beers Atlas and the other one? Who's... Why not? Walling, probably. Yeah. Walling. 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 Right. Walling. Right. Walling. right. Uh, it's not that kind of document. It's not. Oh, you, it's mean, not? you mean I'm trying to write a book and you're trying to yeah. <laughs> you're trying to keep us yeah. on task, which is good. <laughs> well, they're good references if you're writing the if you are writing the history thing. It's, it's those it's are our only in putting things together to have that. Mm -hmm. But we don't but need I don't to include think you it. Want to show them. Okay. But looking but if you're at writing it. about the cider making, for example, you could say that you know Jack and what's his name are on the. Yeah, you can list it as a but bibli bibliographical yeah. source. Yeah. Okay. And actually use it. Okay. Yeah. And we've decided we've decided to leave Waitley Glen out of it. We decided that months ago. We're just we're sticking with North Street and it's immediate. Yep. Okay. All right. So, are the tasks, um, Judy? Do you want? Do you if if anyone actually literally sees something on your inventory that doesn't make sense to them? Do you want to hear back on of your? Of course. Thing? Yeah. Okay. And beyond that, are we at the stage where you'll do an outline and then we'll divide up some tasks? So yep. you don't end up writing everything. <laughs> no. That's great. Um, okay. Uh, other business. Um, how, Allison, Alan, do we have anything further on the um, archaeological indicators? Nothing. No. Sure there is. Okay. Allison and I need to get together at some point, but I'm not sure when. <laughs> we need okay. To Okay, and is there? Oh, I have a I have a sm small bit of other business, which is just a report. But do other people have other business? Yeah, I have a small one. Uh, um, the the draft solar plan came up. That's not its title, um, but right, right. you're all right. And they devote a lot of time looking at where solar could be put on buildings solar projects. Wait, slow down now. You're okay. I think it's a dog. It's a dog. It's not Leslie. Dog. No. Yes. <laughs> um, and well, and they identify uh, barns among the among the buildings that one might put a uh, a solar facility on and and they point out that the town very much wants solar to be on buildings and on disturbed land and parking lots and as, as I think we all do. And I was thinking about it and I actually suggested to them I don't think anything will come of it but it might be something that the Historical Commission could work with the Energy Committee on is that maybe they devote a separate paragraph or two to tobacco barns in their in their write-up they, they their organization form was to go residential business and commercial and then farming and municipal um, and the tobacco barns overlap many of those in fact it occurs to me the cemetery barn wasn't on there on they, their list. they probably don't know that the town owns it yeah um, I mean, I, I've already corrected a couple of, you know, errors and omissions of that sort, and I, I missed that one. Yeah, I did too. Um, anyway, 99% of the tobacco barns are oriented uh, with the gable ends east and west. 
so they have a southern facing roof um a nice wide even southern facing roof mm -hmm. um i pointed out to them and i will send this part of my comments to everybody but that the heritage landscape inventory identified tobacco barns is something I wanted to save. A lot of these aren't in great shape. Um, maybe this would be a way of encourage generating some income or some interest in people and fixing up their barns. And you mean, you mean in the in the sense that the most important thing about saving a barn is to save the roof and that solar panels would require a, a, a solid, a substantial safe, yeah, yeah roof structure. But might doesn't... also generate some income or some savings to the, to the property owner or the farmer that would help pay for that. Yeah, I missed that. When I read it very quickly, uh, maybe three or four weeks ago, I wrote to Sylvie, the new staff person, and pointed out a couple of things that seemed just crazy. But I also pointed out they had the town hall in it as a possible um, location for uh, solar panels. And I pointed out that we have a permanent uh, preservation restriction that it adheres to the secretary's standards. And unless those standards change, it wouldn't be possible to put solar panels on that slate roof, um, which I was pleased, I have to say, that she simply she just cut it out of my email and put it on as a footnote. Um, uh, some of the tobacco barns have slate roofs too, of course. Um, the one next to our house has it, has them, but maybe well, not. Just seemed, not I don't know. It just it yes. just seemed like a something. It does. It doesn't really fit in with the logic of the report as it was prepared, but it just seemed like something that might be worth thinking about or, or um, throwing out there, if 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 there could be a concerted effort to, I don't know, solarize tobacco barns or something. <laughs> it won't work for all of them. Most of them need to be. They they have a diagram of, I've forgotten what the wiring is called, but it needs to be near a three way wiring and most of those go on route five and ten and I think actually there's one on north street um there are maps of those so they need to be near a road and near most of you know a big a big facility i don't know about something for a household probably like ours certainly doesn't need that but anyway that's just a a thought i don't know if I would say the odds of anything developing from it are small, but it might get some people thinking. Are you asking, um, are you saying that it would be nice for that message to come from the historical commission? Or are well, you I'm suggesting doing that, it on your own? that they might, might want to include a paragraph to that some effect, just pointing out that this is true of tobacco barns, you know, the, the advantages they offer in siting and that kind of thing. Um, and then maybe the historical commission might want to, if if that in fact does appear, then maybe the historical commission might want to approach the energy committee and see if there's something that could be done jointly. Since the energy committee seems to do very little on its own, that <laughs> is a dangerous thing to, to undertake. But the energy committee is Nat Fortune and Paul Newland. It's a, a shrinking committee. Um, so uh, you're not you're not suggesting that we do something now. I'm just no, no. <laughs> just, just <laughs> informational <laughs> and, and thought provoking, maybe something. I've never, I've never thought about that east west orientation point that you made. I mean, the, the, one, the, the, the tobacco barns I know best are the three that are on the Brooks property right next to us. And two of them are oriented east-west and one is oriented north-south. And I think that may have more to do with the terrain. Yeah, the, the and, only, um, only yeah. other one I can think of is the one in my grandfather's pasture up on the hill. And that's the terrain. 
uh -huh. just wasn't it room to put it east west okay um i asked sylvie since I, I and i'm sure i'm not the only person i'm interested in what the town wants to do about solar energy beyond the historical commission's concerns and i asked her when when it uh, when it was first up on the website, it didn't say anything about what the timing was going to be for orient, you know, implementing a plan. Um, and it still doesn't say that, and it still doesn't really have a date by which comments are uh, solicited. Have you heard anything about that, Judy? No. No, no. They just they just okay. sent out the the broadside. Right, 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 Taylor. Um, Okay, um, thanks. So my other piece of business is that I had an email this morning from Bob Klinger, who's a trustee of the library, a library trustee, who wrote and said, um, thank you again for your help. I mean, he wrote, it affected the historical commission. I hope you've seen that the work has been done and uh, it told, um, told me something I didn't know, which is that it isn't quite finished. They're going to put one more coating on top, which uh, a protective coating, which will be done probably in October. Um, but I thought that was nice. So I wrote to him and thanked him and copied Alan Sanderson. Um, it does, I, I the, um, the wooden ramp, extension is back on, but they did keep the incision and size design in the left side of the platform there. Um, so I'm assuming they did, they kept it on the right too, which is that that was part of the design to start with. Okay. So, um, okay. Thanks. Um, I have a, a request for our next meeting, which is October, sorry, October 16th. Um, could, would it be okay to meet at 5.30 instead of five? Could people handle that? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'll so. be away then, I hope. But... You'll be away. Okay. Hopefully. They don't turn um, the water off at the cave. Okay. Um, I think it will be okay with Susan since she uh, has uh, retired from her work you know, sometimes. But I'll, Alan, do you want me to check with her and copy you before you put it in the minutes? Oh, uh, sure. That would it just, okay. yeah. it, anyway, it doesn't matter why how I double scheduled myself, but I did. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, thank you all. Stay warm. Thank you. And dry. And dry. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.